वेलकम टू दिस वीडियो भास्कर हियर फ्रॉम फार्मा ग्रोथ हब एंड एज अ पार्ट ऑफ टूडेज वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट वन ऑफ द वेरी सिग्निफिकेंट टॉपिक व्हेन इट कम्स टू स्टेबिलिटी स्टडी एंड दैट इज नन अदर देन द सिग्निफिकेंट चेंज सो वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट व्हाट इज मीन बाय सिग्निफिकेंट चेंज व्हाट यू मस्ट डू व्हेन द सिग्निफिकेंट चेंज अकर at what stability conditions the significant change is really applicable so let us begin with the very first question that is for which stability condition the significant change is applicable and we will talk about the definition of the significant change in the coming slides so as we know that there are three important stability conditions long term intermediate and accelerated so according to you for which condition the significant change really applicable and most of the time i seen people talking about yes it is applicable for the accelerated condition but according to me based on to my own analysis the significant change is not only applicable for the accelerated condition but it is also applicable for the intermediate condition too and the reference of this you can find into a ICH guideline Q1e. So, if you go through the ICH guideline Q1e, which is about evaluation of shelf life for the drug substance or drug product, you will find the guideline mentions about the various different scenarios, such as if the significant change occurs at intermediate condition, and hence. we can understand that the significant change is also applicable for the intermediate condition so what is meant by significant change for a drug substances or a drug substance so significant change for drug substance means if the drug substance doesn't meet the specification if your batch doesn't meet the specification then you can say that okay now the batch under stability study may be at intermediate condition or accelerated condition has met with the significant change and let me give you few of the examples after this slide so it can be one uh, product which one parameter out of the specification or there can be a multiple parameters out of the specification it can be only assay or it can be both assay and related substances the question is now once you come across a significant change you have to investigate the significant change through os procedure because for drug substances or api significant change means the failure in meeting the specification essentially you are talking about the out of specification result and hence those out of specification result you have to investigate first to understand that yes there is no any analytical error occurred so once you confirm that yes now this is the confirmed significant change occurred then you can go for the uh, the subsequent corrective actions for example in case of a significant change occurred at uh, accelerated condition you can stop the testing further samples at accelerated condition and you can start analyzing the intermediate condition sample and this is an example of uh, the significant change let us say you have a drug substance with this parameter description melting point solubility assay rs and particle size and you have a specification for your drug substance now this is a batch number 1 and you have a 6 month accelerated data how the data looks the data looks meeting the complete specification so you can say that for this particular batch number 1 no significant change occurred let me give the another batch which is a batch number 2 now and for this batch number 2 you can clearly see that you know the assay is out of the spec 98.8 the limit is 99.0 to 101.0 and for this particular batch this significant change has occurred because the assay result is out of the specification let us also take one more example for the batch number 2 3 batch number 3 and you will find that it is not with one parameter but there are multiple parameters which are out of the specification 
and hence you can also say that the batch number three there is a significant change occurred i hope you understand in which condition you will say there is no significant change and where you can say that okay now there is a significant change occurred for this particular batch let us now move ahead with the definition of significant change for drug products so for drug product the definition of significant change depends on the parameter maybe depends on to the kind of dosage forms let us now talk with the assay the 5% change in assay for initial value is considered as a significant change now this 5% change doesn't mean only decrease in the assay value but even it can be increase in the assay value theoretically it may not be possible but you never know what is going to happen practically so it can happen in case of uh, semi permeable container for uh, the liquid products aqueous based product if there is a loss of water right your label claim is certainly going to get increased i mean your assay value can get increased and you can have the assay value in case if there is a 5% more than your initial value then you can say that okay now the significant change has occurred for my liquid product so as an example initial value is 98 and for accelerated 6 month the assay value is found to be 92% so the difference is 6% remember you have to calculate the absolute difference not the relative difference with respect to initial value always remember that the difference between your stability value has to be calculated from the initial assay value right second point the failure to meet the acceptance criteria for potency when using biological or immunological procedures so generally this biological or immunological procedures aids lot of variabilities and because of that the 5% variation is quite possible and hence the only 5% variation cannot be considered as a significant change for those kind of test procedures so for those procedures the failure in meeting the assay specification is considered as a significant change so for example if your assay limit is 90 to 110% and if the accelerated third month assay value is 88% in that case you can say that okay now there is a significant change occurred for my particular batch other values for assay change may be applied if justified to certain products such as multivitamins herbals and even nutraceuticals now for multivitamins and herbal products we also know that there is a lot of variabilities coming uh, during the analysis even for nutraceuticals where the label claim is in terms of ppm so the 5% ch change cannot be considered as a significant change because you will have a lot of variabilities during the analysis so for those kind of products the variation in assay limit like 5% cannot be applicable and you can have your own ideas on applying this variations so now this particular point is not covered into the ICH guideline but it is covered into a WHO stability guideline so if you are working for multivitamins or herbal preparations you can think of uh, saying okay the significant change in assay will be uh, not meeting the specification and that is absolutely fine the next one is any degradation products exceeding its acceptance criteria like let us say impurity age limit is not more than 0.5% and you found that at 6 month of accelerated condition the impurity a content is 0.6% so you can say that now my batch has met with the significant change with respect to impurity a content next one failure to meet the acceptance criteria for appearance for example if your specification says that the the tablet is white color tablets 
and if you found that six months uh, during the accelerated testing the off-white color tablets then you can say that my particular batch has come across a significant change as far as appearance is concerned similarly the failure to meet the acceptance criteria for a physical attributes like friability resuspendability of the particles in a uh, liquid solution, the phase separation in case of uh, emulsion formulation, the caking and hardness, they all are belongs to a significant change. Failure to meet the acceptance criteria for functionality tests like dose delivery per actuations for MDIs. Failure to meet the acceptance criteria for pH, for example, if you have a semi solid with the pH range as the acceptance criteria and if the drug product doesn't meet that pH range then you can say now there is a significant change occurred. Similarly, failure to meet the acceptance criteria for dissolution for 12 dosage unit means it can be a S2 stage for immediate release dosage form or it can be at L2 stage for the modified release dosage form. So if your drug product doesn't meet the acceptance criteria for S2 or L2, you can say now the drug product has met with this significant change. And there is a uh, slight twist in the dissolution part and I will talk about that maybe few slide down. Softening of the suppositories. So if the suppository becoming soft at the 40 degree Celsius, as, uh, which is accelerated condition then you can say now it is a significant change melting of creams is also be a significant change for semi-solid or partial loss of adhesion for transdermal products now this is not mentioned into the ICH uh, stability guideline but this is mentioned by the WHO stability guidelines and this is the one last one the 5% loss in water from its initial value for a product packaged in a semi permeable container after an equivalent of 3 months storage at 40 degree Celsius and 25% RH. Now look here the loss of water is very critical for a aqueous based uh, drug product packaged into a semi permeable container and hence if there is a greater than a five percent water loss as compared to its initial water content value you can say it's a significant change so the next obvious key question would be what to do once you come across a significant change result if a significant change occurs due to failure in meeting the spec failure to meet specification result must be investigated by the os procedure to rule out analytical error so you must confirm that the failure in meeting the specification is not because of the any kind of analytical error and if you confirm that there is no such analytical error occurred and then you can confirm the significant change and then you can take the appropriate actions if a significant change occurs is not due to failure in meeting the specification then what you can do the significant change if it is not because of the OS it must be investigated by the OOT procedure to rule out analytical error so in any case whether the significant change is because of the not meeting the specification or because of the certain changes you have to investigate the change and once you confirm that change, then we will talk about what needs to be done. So what to do, what to do once the significant change is confirmed? Once you understand that there is no lab error, analytical error occurred and the significant change is really true. If a significant change is occurred at accelerated condition, then go for intermediate condition testing. For example, if your accelerated condition is 40 degree Celsius and 75% average and if your intermediate condition is 30 degree Celsius and 65% average, then go for the intermediate condition testing and you can stop testing the batch, that particular batch for the accelerated condition. 
Second point is very important. Product packaged in a semi-permeable container, a significant change in water loss alone at the accelerated condition does not necessitate testing at the intermediate to storage condition. So if you found only a water loss of greater than 5% for a product packaged into a semi-permeable container, you should not immediately stop testing the product at accelerated condition and you should not start immediately testing the product at intermediate condition. But in addition to that water loss, if you find, okay, now there is an assay failure for such kind of product packaged into a semi-permeable container, then you can certainly go, go for testing the product at intermediate condition and you can stop testing the product at the accelerated condition. Okay, so now let us understand if significant change occurred at intermediate condition. So we understand and discuss what we supposed to do if the significant change gets occurred at accelerated condition. But what we must do in case if the significant change occurred at intermediate condition? Let us understand. If you look at the guidance uh, from Q1AR2 or Q1E, you will not find any such kind of guidance provided by these guidelines. So according to me, if the significant change gets occurred at intermediate condition, the study should be continued for 12th month until the 12th month or if until the results are not OS. So in case if you found a significant change at intermediate condition for 6th month, you must continue the testing at intermediate at 9th month and 12th month also. Because the 12th month data is required for intermediate condition. But in case if you say that this, the intermediate condition uh, study you are performing and a significant change occurred at 6th month. So you started the testing even at ninth month. And if the ninth month data you found there is a out of specification result, then there is no point in continuing the testing at 12th month intermediate point. You can stop the testing at ninth month itself. I hope you understand the requirement of testing at intermediate condition. So what is not significant change? We talked about the significant change for API, significant change for drug product. Now let us understand what is not really called as a significant change. So softening of a suppository that is designed to melt at 37 degrees Celsius. If the melting point is clearly demonstrated, we know that for the product to be stored at room temperature, the accelerated condition is what? 40 degrees Celsius and 75% RH. Now, adds, if the suppository is um, uh, you know, designed to get melted at 37 degrees Celsius, it is but obvious that it is also going to melt at 40 degrees Celsius at accelerated condition. So are you going to consider that is a significant change now? you supposed to not consider that as a significant change provided the melting point is clearly demonstrated. Otherwise, if the melting point is not clearly demonstrated and still you are analyzing the suppository and if it gets melt at 40 degree, you must say it is a significant change. Failure to meet the acceptance criteria for dissolution for 12 units of a gelatin capsule or a gel coated tablet if the failure can be unequivocally attributed to cross linking a reference Q1E. We very well know in case if the dissolution gets failed because of the cross linking of the gelatin, it is not to be said as a failure and same is the reference given by the Q1E. So in case if you are analyzing a capsule made up of gelatin or a tablet having a gelatin coat the S2 means I mean the failure in dissolution at S2 stage doesn't mean a significant change you have to again go back with the addition of enzymes according to the dissolution chapter 7 11 
and then understand whether now dissolution is meeting the spec or not. So in case if the dissolution by addition of enzyme meets the specification either at S1, S2 or even or S2, especially for this case now, there is no necessity to go with the significant change. Right? But in case if the dissolution does not meet at S2, even after adding the enzyme, then you can say now the product has uh, come across a significant change. So I hope you must have now understood the, the definition of significant change, what to do when the significant change gets occurred, what is mean by significant change, what is not mean by significant change. Thank you so much.